kid crying in the background. All right, here we are. We're live. Good. Is this on? <laughs> Eric, where are you? <laughs> this is this is not New your, this Hampshire. is not your studio. Yeah. No, I'm I'm in the wild. Up, I think you were inspired in New Hampshire. I think you were inspired by Mike last week. You know, nice to be outside. Absolutely. I was like, what am I doing in this house? I got to get out of here. So this is actually my dad's uh, 2009 Holiday Rambler. Okay. 40 foot. Nice little, nice coach. This is smart RVers do this. They buy used RVs for a lot less money than the ones who buy brand new diesel pushers like me. That was, that's probably not the way to do it properly, but. Well, uh, in yeah, some, my dad still got plenty to teach me. <laughs> it's in some ways, it's like uh, boats, right? I mean, a used boat has been broken in and fixed, and all of the dumb things that could go wrong have been taken care of. You know, same thing yeah, with a used you, RV. You, you get that like warranty freak out when you're new to this. You're like, I just need a warranty. Um, but he picked this boat, this bus up about a year ago, and compared to my 2021 integra cornerstone which is which is a pretty nice rig this thing has 85 percent of the same technology on it like the vir virtually the same suspension about 99 of it for a fifth of the price so it's it's and it's still going strong hasn't had any issues survived the tampa hurricanes lost the wow that was it lost lost the windshield in the tampa hurricanes Oh, a tree went through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. It's a fun my, story. My brother, my dad, holy shit. My, my dad bought it, said, I'll pick it up in two months. And the hurricane hit in those two months. And the guy didn't move it. <laughs> so, 50 RVs in that park were flipped over, and this beast survived it. So, wow. So that's, that's pretty cool. Bus. I my my brother had a tree fall on his uh, Toyota to, uh, Tundra pickup truck, and the insurance company's like, "Yeah, we don't total Toyota pickup trucks." So, <laughs> we'll sorry, but we're gonna fix it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, have you seen Top Gear where they drop it off the top of a? Yeah, like, that, a that was exact. Yeah, that was exactly what I told him too. I was like, you know, so. Well, <laughs> welcome everyone. Do we? Yeah, we have people watching already. This is great. Um, the uh, the topic of this week is going to be how much data do you really need? And this week we actually have two guests. We have Eric, our fearless leader and founder, and then we have Andy, who is our everything else. <laughs> on the store. Um, my name's Dave. I am the head of special projects and welcome to the live stream. So the question really comes down to what are the key factors that people should consider when they're trying to figure out how much data they're going to use? And I think the best part, best way to do this is I want to get two perspectives. One from Eric, who has you know, a, a wife that works and he works full time from the road. And then from Andy, who not only has two working people in the on the road, but also two teenage, one teenager and one almost teenager on the road <laughs> um, and probably consumes more data than Eric and I combined, which does wouldn't surprise me in any sense, sense of the word. Yeah, that so, sounds all right. That's also why I'm on mute because we have background noise. So. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so Andy, just give me the high sign when you think you have a quiet moment and we'll we'll cut we'll come back to you. But yeah, Eric, you're good. You're good. Eric, you know, how, what what are the factors that people should consider when when they're trying to figure out how much data they use? Yeah. So I mean I think you've got a couple different things, right? If if you are reliant on your internet connection for your TV is becoming more and more popular um i canceled our uh satellite television dish or you know wh whatever one you have about two years into getting on the road so around 2017 and we hopped into the uh the youtube uh tv streaming concept so this idea that i could pay at the time 45 bucks i think it's now 65 bucks and get access to all of my local or all of my live TV channels 
and have it on my phone, have it in my RV, have it in my house. It was completely location independent as long as that location had internet. Uh, so I didn't have all these cable bills all over the place. When I parked the RV, maybe I went somewhere else. I didn't have to pay a satellite bill. I was like, ooh, this is cool. Um, so that jacked up my uh, my band my my need for more um, more capacity on the uh, the internet side of things. Um, Zoom live streams work stuff like that became more and more predominant in like the 2018s and on. So we started seeing that, and it uses kind of a comparable amount of data to what you'd see a TV show using. So maybe it's three, four megabits. Um, and I know, you know, we can geek out at this, but I, I think we just wrote a really cool and detailed blog post that gives folks a lot of the data of like, how much data does watching TV at X, you know, resolution for an hour download? So we yeah. won't kind of totally geek into that, but we'll link that. And that gives yeah, people a lot of cheat sheet notes to, to know. I, I'll go, I'll post that now in chat. Let me grab the link, but yeah, I'll post that for people. We'll also, yeah. we, we can also link it in on afterwards for the live stream on, on YouTube as a pinned comment. And on, I assume we can do the same thing on Facebook, but um, yeah, I think that's, but that's a great you idea. know, your, your, your standard browsing, you're kind of hanging out, you're checking email. Most of that stuff doesn't use up a lot of data. Um, if you're cautious uh, with your devices and you turn off automatic updates, they don't tend to use a lot of data. But keep in mind, if your devices just see Wi-Fi and they connect to a PEP link or any device, they're going to just assume they're on an unlimited Internet connection. So, you know, your Mojave blah, blah, blah Apple update is 10 gigs. So you could be surprised when that downloads in the middle of the night. Another one that has that takes people a little bit for a loop is like online backup software i see a lot of people uh you know enable OneDrive or carbonite or some type of cloud-based backup solution and just say yeah back it all up <laughs> it backs up 300 gigs of hard drive uh, and but, by data plan <laughs> yeah i think that's really why people uh learn to appreciate a more advanced mobile router solution because you can see that stuff happening and set up alerts and know what's going on before the, you choose the big one we've had up. is um is game updates like platform updates for uh the nintendo switch stuff like that where games have had 10 gigabyte updates or i, I know xbox has had crazy high ones from what i've heard of um yeah. so that could be another big zone 100 100 gig per update pretty pretty significant and then any game is between 50 and 150 gig depending on the mm -hmm. game so um yeah and and raymond I just Jewell had a good a good suggestion here which is starlink you could you could use some of the outbound policy tools to to direct some of the traffic where you know maybe you don't you don't care about yeah, so there's there's a little Easter egg in today's fireside chat. There's actually a firmware release coming out in it's in beta right now, so you could test it and play around with it in beta, and you can just Google search Peplink beta firmware, and you'll find uh, where you can download betas. But firmware eight point four is officially dropping uh, in a couple of days. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about the permanent release date, but it's inside of a week. And uh, one of the interesting new advanced features that that will come with is some more uh, advanced abilities to tweak your outbound policies. And okay. one thing you can do is you can tell it um, not only to use like a least used connection, but you can specify upload or download. So okay. that can really kind of help you improve either your download or your upload speed if you can set up those policies more effectively an example like starlink oftentimes really does struggle with upload like it just doesn't have a lot of upload and if you can tell the outbound policy hey use my least used cellular connection for primary upload it will it will automatically do that and you may significantly improve your upload speed while maintaining a good solid download speed using that starlink connection so some fun little Easter eggs there, but, you know, going back to like the topic. So I have a property here in New Hampshire with a public Wi-Fi system that's feeding right now, probably like uh, probably three or four families 
um, in total. And I just looked at our usage and we're at about two terabytes, uh, 1.934 terabytes in a 30 day period. Um, so that would be considered like some, like, like a lot of people just absolutely crushing it and trying to use the internet effectively like home internet. Yeah. Um, my average traveling, working heavily and leaving the TV on way too much in the background, 800 gigs uh, okay. is, is kind of my like, that's my number. I seem to, when I am not at all thinking about the internet, I'm using 800 gigs. When I'm turning off the TV, trying not to leave stuff streaming all the time, worried about a data cap, something like that, three, 400. Um, okay. And if I removed live TV from that and, and it would go way down. So yeah, there's, and that's, uh, there's, and I would assume that's also including, you know, doing a lot of the video production stuff you do with us in terms of uploading videos and stuff like that too. Is that part yeah, of I mean, that we, usage we, or? Absolutely. There's so much work related content that's going on and, I'm a bit silly. I've got security cameras in my RV that are pumping up to a DVR 24 seven. So that's definitely not helping. And, um, I think, uh, I think there's quite a bit there, but you know, I, I mean, so we have thousands and thousands of customers on our, on our, on our data plans that are available on our website. And with our 300 gig plans, a handful of people hit those caps every month, like three or four. So I think the vast majority of people are 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 under 300 gigs, and and anyone who's serious about mobility is typically traveling with more than one connection. So they are definitely uh, able to stack those gigs across different plans. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people do travel with more than. You know, <laughs> Well, it's a I'm just laughing wings. at the she's cat. Getting, now we know this is live, by the way. <laughs> wings <laughs> the cat. Yeah. Um, no cats were harmed sunlight. in the making yeah. of this live stream. But, like, I, like um, I'm <laughs> actively looking at my usage based on Eric's comments here. And so we're at like last month. I don't know. We did something crazy. I was at three terabytes. So something three terabytes. So, yeah, wow. I think I was doing a lot of video work, um, you know, for uploads. Minecraft. It's probably a couple of Minecraft updates. The same. I've never seen three terabytes. Usually, it's around 1.3, 1.2 terabytes. Um, but we're streaming TV. Like Disney Plus is crazy. I mean, it's on all the time. There's five people here, so yeah. um, there's just a lot of data flowing through it. Plus, I do a lot of the channel work here. Um, Eric and I are sharing footage like crazy, so there's just a lot, and that's going through a lot of different channels. I've got. I've got Starlink, so that's including Starlink in that. That's including data plans, um, Wi-Fi. I mean, that's that's all of my usage altogether. Yeah, um, kind of looped in. And you're you, Andy, are are full time in your RV at this point again now. That yeah, we've back been. The road, right? Yeah, we travel basically once a week on the weekends to new places to kind of explore. Um, and then, yeah, we've been full time since 2018 in the RV. Wow, that's that's amazing. Uh, now, you you talk about three terabytes across all the data plans. Can you talk about sort of the data plans that you're running on a on a day to day basis? Yeah. Um, so Eric and I are testing some stuff. So data plans are kind of shifting around a lot, which is fun to talk about. But the primary plan is going to be a, the P1000. Um, so it's a T-Mobile five G compatible plan. Um, it's a terabyte based on the amount of data and then available, um, mobile must have .com. yeah right on off of our end. site and then um the second primary one yep. is typically a at t um 300 gig plan um so and then starlink so i have a terabyte on starlink a terabyte on t-mobile and then um at t and then some test plans kind of come in and out depending on what we're looking at um another little easter egg for folks on the live stream our P1000 plan, we we advertise it as a thousand gigs. It it's it's essentially an unlimited plan. There are no caps at the top. We just don't like to use the word unlimited. 
someone plugs it into a server and does a hundred terabytes, <laughs> we get a call. That gonna get, that's going to get capped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's it, unlimited. You know, it's not, not going to. It's not a reason. throttle or anything. It's yeah. really an arbitrary number we came up with that we feel is more than enough for for most people. Well, and so Raymond asked a question kind of similar to this: like, uh, will Pepling toggle back and forth between Starlink? Um, and data plans to maintain connections. So the answer roughly is yes there. Well, does. Yeah, let me, let me, let me, because we get this, this is like the on number one? one question about peplinks. Yeah. So whenever you reach out to the internet, it's called a session. So you're establishing a connection with someone else you're talking to. It could be a website, could be a Zoom, could be a TV show, could be Netflix. You're establishing a session. Now, a peplink device, before you establish the session, it'll look at all of the online available connections and it will pick one based on whatever policies you've set. The default policy is pick whichever one is the fastest, meaning latency or kind of like the snappiness of the connection and it'll grab it and it'll run a session down that tunnel. Now, if you have another computer on the same network or another device or your phone or whatever and you go create another session, like I want to go out this other thing, it will run that same thing again, but it may get a different answer. The second time it, when it goes, because that first connection is being used, when it goes, who's the fastest response, the public may come back and say, it's Starlink. That second session will go out Starlink. That technology is called load balancing, and it is enabled by default on all Peplink devices without any special setup or configuration. So that kind of tells you how that works. Now, to take it to the next level is where you call is something called bonding, which is where you connect all the connections together. Speed fusion is what the uh, technology is called for peplinks. That's what they patented it under. It's called speed fusion connect protect is the official current name of that. And what that's doing is it's saying, don't worry about checking all these, just bond them together into one connection and use them all at the same time. And that's an oversimplification, but we have so much content on Speed Fusion, Connect, Protect. And uh, for folks that are intimidated by that, Peplink has gotten it to the point where you can set that up and configure it in under five mouse clicks. So it is very easy and fast to, to configure. But it's not for every type of traffic. So you you typically set them up uh, in both ways. And we have a Speed Fusion guide that explains how we recommend customers set up their networks. One Wi-Fi network works the first way with load balancing, and one Wi-Fi network works the second way with speed fusion. And then you simply connect to whichever Wi-Fi you want, depending on what you're going to do with that device. A good example would be, there's no reason to bond all your connections together to watch Netflix. Um, it wouldn't actually even work because Netflix would see that bonded connection and think you were trying to watch TV from outside the United States or outside of your geographic location, and it might pop up an error. <laughs> um, but even without that, there's just no point. Um, you'd really just typically want to stream over your fastest connection. It'll 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 uh, work better, to be honest. So most people have those two Wi-Fi networks and just use the bonded one for stuff like this for when you're on a work call or you have something where you really need the connection to be super reliable, but um, that's a good good way to put it. And to, to Raymond's follow-up, um, could Starlink be one of those networks? Absolutely anything could be one of those networks. You could plug a cable mm -hmm. modem into it, you could plug Starlink into it, you could plug a T-Mobile home little box. Those are popular yeah, right now into it. Yeah. You could technically connect to an external campground Wi-Fi and that would be a WAN source. Um, that's the beauty of the Peplink device is it doesn't care. It goes, hey, whatever you give me as an internet source, I'm going to then work downstream to optimize, combine, load balance, whatever whatever you can think of. Yep. Yep. No, that's Multiple that's, that's cellular that's... modems. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, four, twelve. Yeah. However many uh, we have. <clears throat> all, I mean, yes, I mean, if all we done. want to geek out for a session, I'm sure Andy could share his current dashboard and show how many connections he's got online right now. One of them being Starlink. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let me see if I can do that with this program, but I'll just try and set that up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll another little back. another little Easter egg on that just before you wrap up. 
8.4, that firmware coming out, officially has Starlink native support in that 8.4 firmware. So what that means is you can actually monitor the Starlink from the in control Two cloud management system in Peplink now, and you'll okay. get a little Starlink logo. And technically you could even stow your dish from the Starlink webpage. Um, but I would caution you not to do that because if that's your only connection and you stow the dish, <laughs> you're, you're now <laughs> offline and the website that stowed it cannot get to the Peplink anymore to unstow it. So, um, but more, Specifically, what's interesting is a lot of the statistical data about Starlink, the performance, obstructions, views, all that stuff is now available in, in control. So it's um, Starlink and Peplink have a have a growing partnership and they seem to like playing with each other uh, based on how they're helping each other. Um, I think Starlink is very excited about um, Peplink's ability to help them with some upload bandwidth to keep their network healthy and their customers happy by augment offloading some traffic to cellular and to other connections. And Peplink's very happy because Starlink allows their device to be even better than ever because it's another thing you can plug into it. Yep. Yep. That's yep. that's that's really great info. Uh Raymond had one follow-up question, Andy. You know, what 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 kind of Starlink unit are you running? And I think yeah. Eric, you can answer that question too, but yeah, I'm running the high performance flat mount. Um, I you can go on our YouTube channel and see the install video of how it's installed right on the roof. Um, one of the key, there's a lot of key benefits to the flat mount one, but the main one I like the most is I don't ever have to set it up. So it's always on, it's always working. I don't have to do a pole or suction cups or run cables and wires when I get there. I I park and if, I don't even check the internet anymore. It just works, and that's through four, three layers of cellular and, and Starlink. They're always on. Never think about it. And and you don't yeah. have to stow it anymore when you go to drive, right? No, I mean, it's, it's just fixed. Don't, so right, that's, they did make a big change from when we when I installed it. Um, that was when I when they first came out with this when it was on the in motion kind of plan. So if you got this particular hardware, it worked while you were driving. Um, now they've moved that to be based on what plan you're purchased. Um, so I do not have the in motion plan. I don't need, I don't, I just use cellular while I'm driving. I don't need Starlink. Uh, so it only works when I'm driving less than 10 miles an hour, but I can always instantly upgrade to the uh, in motion version if I need it with that antenna. Yeah. Well, if the 10 mile an hour limit's the limit, that's perfect for sailing because uh, that's about as fast as <laughs> sailboats go. Uh, well, it's very <laughs> that's not why on the marine. Yeah, as yep. long as you're not in the ocean, it'll work. Yeah, they did it for intercoastal, you know, just putting along. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, yeah, those the fixed mount dish is expensive. Twenty five hundred bucks. It's it, it's a hit. It, you know, people feel it. I can tell you, after having both of them, it's night and day. I mean, really, the, the it's it's double the surface area. It's higher powered. They call it a high performance dish for a reason. It outperforms my standard square dishy hands down it, it it does really well in just faster speed but it also does well in like partial obstruction where the other dish just struggles if you've got like that one bunch of trees that just kill the thing uh the fixed mount has kicked butt and done better but um i'm not knocking you know the, the standard dish the you know 500 hundred dollar price point it's killer um, I'm actually going to be installing the standard dish on my, uh, my, my travel trailer, which is sort of like our secondary trade show trailer, um, and doing an install. So you can see the fix mount and you can see that one. And I'm going to do a really cool, like special install so that it vastly simplifies the whole wiring problem that everybody has. Okay. Wow. So that's, that's a, that's coming. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll see that video. And. I think there's some stuff that we're doing that not a lot of people have have put out there that uh, can improve your Starlink setup. Yeah, and I think I mean that original, the original dish, and then the dishy, which is is probably what the Gen Two Starlink. Di I've I've almost lost track. I think they call it, I think they call it the Starlink Roam now. Okay. That's the that's the dishy, and then the the uh, the high performance fix mount is what they call the the one that's essentially double the size for RV and. A lot of people are putting them on marine as well. 
Yeah, but but I mean, the original sort of dish on a stand wasn't really designed for mobile use or anything like that. It was really designed to 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 live in to be, provide internet to somewhere that wouldn't otherwise have access to maybe cable or DSL, right? Yeah, rural home solution essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, people have have figured out a lot of cool ways to customize it. There's a there's a pretty large contingent of people that are taking uh, Dremels to the back of them and cutting out the foot and turning or converting them, obviously avoiding your warranty, into fixed mount dishes. Um, but uh, pretty solid results with that. Um, not something that I would rely on as my only internet connection, but absolutely part of the arsenal. Yep. Yeah. I, th I think that's 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 great information. Um, one of the questions that I think people run into a lot is, like, let's say you're headed to a new location. How do you evaluate which carriers are going to work there, if if any, and and what do you do in those situations? You know, I mean, you, I think you two, are, you two are road warrior veterans at this point in terms of going to lots of places yeah so some of it's history but. i mean i've been saying this for a while but starlink is a 50 50 shot for me in most places and it's almost always because of tree cover it used to be because of the coverage issues with the lack of satellites they've, they've done a really good job to make that better but now it's just there's a lot of trees in campgrounds you know you go out west it gets better um but uh but in terms of of uh cellular networks I mean, Andy, do you have a magic bullet answer for that? I yeah, mean, I, don't I, feel I, like I, I do. I, I, I have a process. Um, so we travel once a week on Sundays. So the answer has drastically changed from 2018 to today. Um, it also has changed because I have a roof antenna installed. So I think the, the biggest part of my answer here is it entirely depends on what you have. If you have something like our bundles with a Parsec, antenna you care a whole lot less because you're going to get signal in so many more places but when i first left and before we did like our big internet upgrades i absolutely cared um what i would do you know if, if you're on very minimal setups is you have to go to like campendium and you have to look up basically where you're trying to go and see if there is cell signal there's a really cool app called coverage made by our friends at um mobile internet resource center um that basically overlays all the carriers covers maps together so you can see on one one place all the different coverage um great app for high level summaries not very good if you're like does this exact campground have coverage because sometimes it's just not it's based on what the carriers say not based on like what users are reporting um there's also open signal which is an app that will tell you based on what the user is saying but the problem is that it's going to be phone based typically, not necessarily hotspot based. So you might get signal there, but that doesn't mean it's going to be usable or fast or workable, as I'll say it. Like uh, a great example is we had an affiliate just roll into Thousand Trails Orlando. <laughs> Anybody's ever been there, they know that that you can you'll have That's great the Bermuda bars. Triangle. You'll have four bars of coverage at that particular campground. The coverage is not the problem, but the towers then are saturated and really, really slow. So that I have more often than a coverage problem. I normally always have bars. It's then how good is the connection when I get somewhere? Um, and for this affiliate, they were running T-Mobile Home and AT&T in a pep wave and AT&T was getting 0.3 down and wouldn't register an upload speed and T-Mobile Home wouldn't connect at all. It just said no service, even though there was full bars. Um, we basically turned on a T-Mobile plan for them remotely. Um, they were able to get 30 megs down because they were able to get to an, a different tower that was outside of this Orlando circle um, because they had a big antenna and it was they could get to another tower that wasn't saturated sitting inside Orlando. So then they were able to work. She was able to, our affiliate was able to continue yeah. working and doing their consulting job that they get paid to do. Um, so we were able to. Yeah, I'll kind of. That's the experience. I kind of say there's, yeah, there's two. There's two sides to it. One is, I'm spoiled. I have all three cellular carriers in Starlink. My PepLink device, when I get to a location, checks the latency of each connection and anything that's over 250 milliseconds of latency, it just throws in the garbage. It goes, mm -hmm. don't even so. use it. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't. 
do any of this. It's all done automatically in the device. And then, so that's why I don't ever really go in and set it. If Starlink's under a tree, guess what? Latency is super high, disregards it, turns it off. I don't have to turn on or turn off anything. It just works. Um, that's part one of the answer if you've got multiple data plans yeah. and connection yeah. options in your budget. And that's what I would say for folks is that's why you want a multi-connection strategy. Now, onto the cell carriers after being out there and in the wild, I would say that T-Mobile has the most consistent high speeds okay. I'm seeing nationally. Verizon is getting darn fast, and they are they are they are coming after uh, T-Mobile with some of their C-band stuff and what they're doing. Yeah, the I'm getting insane yeah. Verizon speeds. Um, like when we had Mike Wenlands in uh, in Indiana, Starlink was at 180, and Verizon was at 300, and we were like, "Cool." Um, so, and then AT and T is like consistently average that's what i call it it's never fast but it's kind of everywhere mm -hmm. um when i if i could have just picked one plan in 2022 i might have picked at and um really? it didn't seem to ever be over 20 25 megabits <laughs> it's just like that's all the network had but it was kind of everywhere um yeah. what i really liked about and and then the one thing is verizon if you ever go to rallies you ever go to places where there's a lot of RVers? Verizon sucks because everyone's got Verizon. So the tower gets overloaded and it's destroyed. Yeah, and everyone but everyone goes, I've got full bars and nothing works. I that's, think that's getting it's, better. It's true. It's still true. And now T Mobile is falling into that because of T Mobile Home. Everyone has one. And so now yeah. T Mobile is almost basically what Verizon was five years ago, where because everyone's on T Mobile now. T-Mobile is just tanking when there's a lot of people around. Hmm. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. T-Mobile is just, it's interesting for 50 bucks, you get basically unlimited. Who knows when they may start enforcing the fact that that's supposed to be at a home, not driving around in an RV. So that party I think might end at some point, but yeah. um, one of the ways they're subsidizing a lot of the cost with T-Mobile is they're selling your data. If you read the terms and conditions, they say, Hey, all your browsing data, yeah, we're we're gonna go make money with that. So, FYI. that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I love is uh, we we tend to find like two or three really interesting nuggets on these live streams, and that that's that's a good yeah. one. I'm you testing know. right now. Uh, I'm testing a T-Mobile Home new 5G gateway, um, and. Uh, we're, we're seeing some interesting stuff. One thing that's interesting is how the speed tests work and what numbers I get versus go connect to a Microsoft server in a switch data center that I know I can download a 10 gig file from in three minutes. And somehow I'm not getting the same speed download from that Microsoft server as I am from that speed test. So I'm, hmm. I'm digging into that a little bit more, but there appears to be some creative routing going on that makes your speed test look really good, but your actual speeds are a little bit more throttled. I don't know Normal. if throttle is the right word, but network yeah. managed. <laughs> network, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I think that's an interesting point too. So we've used a couple of terms today that I, that I think I wanna get you guys to expand on. One is when we talk about speed, there's the, the megabits per second sort of number, and then you've got a latency number. Can you sort of elaborate a little bit on why both of those numbers are important instead of you know, one, one or, you know? Yeah, so your speed is like your bandwidth, right? So that's like how much you can pull in a given amount of time down from the internet. Um, your latency is more like for folks that are old and maybe actually remember what a landline phone was. Um, if you ever made an international phone call, you'd say hello, and the person in Eng England would say hello about six seconds later. Um, that's latency. Okay. So if you think about what it's like to have a conversation on delay, we've all done it when we're on hold with Verizon or whoever, and we're trying to get tech support, and you can tell they're, they're offshore, and they're using a VOIP phone, so there's like a delay. That's latency. And if two okay. computers are talking to each other, and they go, hello? Can you, and the other one goes, hello, and talks over the first one. 
it creates a lot of problems for the internet. So low okay. latency is how quickly you're effectively able to talk to the other party on the internet. And then the bandwidth is more about how much speed you have between that connection. And those two things are very important. Um, but, you know, I, I noticed, I think Tim was asking a question about, you know, can I just have like three devices watching TV at the same time? Is this doable? And that's an interesting question. I mean, I, I think the average healthy connection to stream or do Zoom or do whatever needs about three to five on the high side megabits per second. Like that's what okay. you need to watch Netflix in HD. Netflix is really aggressive. It'll go down to like 1.5 and work pretty well. It, it knows how to use crappy connections. Um, the point being 25 megabits, which you see on a lot of our entry level data plans is more than enough for somebody to have three devices working and doing what they need to do. And one of the powerful things about Peplink devices or possibly other routers, but that's what we specialize in is the ability to set a bandwidth limit per device on that device. So you say, hey, anybody who goes out to the internet can only use five. And it's like it's setting up lanes for your devices so that when you go connect to Netflix, it doesn't go, ooh, this Starlink connection is great. I'm going to use 45 megabits to do ultra 4K video streaming, which to a phone I, I don't think you're. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you're going to see a difference. You're going to chew through a ton of data for no reason. If you yep. are on a metered plan, you're going to burn through a ton of it for no reason. So the ability to set to lock your devices down to a much more manageable number, like three or five megabits. Yep. Per device, so it'll stack on top of that, is so key to, to managing how much data you need on a monthly basis. I will say, from someone who has like five to seven devices online all the time, that makes a huge difference. Because it just makes sure nothing is pounding and taking everything from, it just makes everyone have an equal share. Um, and so when you have a strong, healthy connection, you can then use five, six devices at a time, watching, streaming, this. Like I can tell you, this is on. I can hear a TV in there going, and some tablet in another place going. So, you know, even even now we have, you know, I can even look at my usage. But I I, I probably oh something's uploading taking sixty megs. So that's helpful. Are, are they live you know. streaming the cat that they were carrying around before? Or? Probably. I mean, so yeah, sixty megabits of upload is an insane amount of upload. Like that's yeah, that's. If we were talking about 1080p, that's that's 10 televisions right now. So some some file is uh, some yeah some video is yeah, yeah. uploading. So if you I'll see Andy's greeny, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I yeah. shut it. I was able to find it, so I turned that one off. But yeah, like I wasn't even looking at it, you know. And but that's the stuff that you, Eric, you're talking about. Stuff can just sneak up and grab your data when you're not even paying attention. Yeah, um, and and I think we have a lot of great strategy articles on support.mobilemusthave.com, and then also with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, mm -hmm. you know, that talk about sort of the more the nitty gritty of how to really manage those those connections and get certain connections and limit connections and all of the other things that go with that, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, if if you check if you anything we talk about conceptually here on the fireside chat. If you go to Mobile Internet Resource Center and, you know, obviously grab a membership from mobilemusthub.com, which gets you access, plus gets you a big discounts on the hardware, and then go up to the top and then go to resources and look at the Peplink Resource Center. Yep. And I've been curating for north of a year now with Chris and Cherie um, a lot of content, everything, bandwidth management, synergy mode, in control, everything that we talk about that's a big topic. We not only go into it, but we screen share the entire thing in a webinar and we show people how to do it so that you can not only kind of conceptually understand it, but you can actually get a guide on how to do it. Interesting. Okay. Okay. That's so yeah. And, and, you know, Andy talked a little bit about how we solved um, an influencer's challenge. And this is something that we're, we're going to start seeing in the next couple couple weeks on the store um, we're going to start releasing um, what are called e plans so you know how we have the r plans which are verizon 
the P plans, which are T-Mobile, and the B plans, which are AT&T. It's not rocket science. B, blue, AT&T, P, pink, T-Mobile. That's that's all that is. Um, we're releasing the E. E, like the concept there being it's a virtual plan. And what that hey, means man. is... Sorry. Yeah. So we will start offering data plans that have more than one carrier attached to them. So we have a data center as part of our launch, I'll give folks a tour. It's a real data center. These aren't running in someone's basement. And we have multiple farms of SIM cards with data plans in them um, of all of the different carriers. And we'll be able to, um, when you purchase one data plan, you'll be able to essentially ride on all three networks and it'll connect to whatever in that area um, you know, is, is the most effective plan for you. It's gonna be a pretty interesting option for folks that don't necessarily want to spend money on just having all the plans all the time um, now keep in mind you you get one connection to one carrier so if you wanted more than one connection but um but it's going to be an interesting thing and that uh the only caveat to that uh which we call remote sim that's the technology peplink has set up um is you have to have a dual modem capable router so that's the transit the br2 the Bounce 20X, those are some of the more popular units. UBR. You look in your, yeah, the UBR. Mm -hmm. On your dashboard, you'll see there's there's drop down SIM card A, SIM card B, and then there's one that says remote SIM. Sometimes it says Fusion SIM if you have one of the older firmwares. That's the technology that allows it to go out to our SIM farm and grab a data plan. Okay, okay. And but do you do you also you you sort of have to have one local plan you, that you can't really rely on just that plan, right? Well, yeah, it's got to go out and get to the to the sim. It's not right. magic. It needs it needs an internet connection of some sort. Could be anything. I mean, technically, you could connect to the campground Wi-Fi. Once you're connected to the campground, it'll go get the sim via the campground Wi-Fi. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily rely on that, but you could pick up a inexpensive you know 10 gig verizon plan that's on your phone plan for an extra 10 or 15 bucks a month and really all that plan is doing for you is allowing you to connect and then go get your other plans okay okay when do we have yeah. a, a sort of launch date for for the e-plans i'm not trying to put you on the spot but i'm just <laughs> I, think, I think i think people <laughs> We so are actively we'll testing them. Hear, that's all. Yeah. So it is tested and working. One of the things I do not like about it right now is that our thirty thousand dollar sim farm. It's not cheap hardware. Uh, technically, if it went poof, it would cause a lot of users to go offline. So we've invested in a, another thirty thousand dollar <laughs> sim farm. Painful. Uh, but that allows me to have redundancy. So if one needs to be in maintenance mode or has to go offline or something else, it's not affecting our customers. So that okay. second device, now that we're we're out of, I'll call alpha and going into beta, is uh, arriving next week. And I'd really like to see this for November 1st. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. We are actively taking beta customers right now. So you can message um, us at, at uh, info at mobilemusthave.com and just say, you know, I. I watched the fireside chat and want to look at the beta program for one of those data plans. And, okay. um, and we, we can, we can give some folks some early access. We're looking for more testers. Very interesting. Huh. Um, and then, you know, we, we talk a lot about the plans that we sell through mobile must have, but what happens if somebody wants to go direct to a carrier? and get a data plan are they able to get similar data plans to what we sell or you know uh yes and no so um i mean you could do a google search and see unlimited anything data plans for rural home or rv use for anywhere from 80 to 150 dollars a month from a million companies um okay. sadly a lot of those companies disappear when they have a problem and then they reappear with a different name shortly thereafter um, and a, a big part of the reason for that is because they're they're mostly selling tablet plans and they're basically kind of hot wiring them to run in routers and devices you know because they can get a tablet plan for 20 bucks that's technically unlimited um, 
and then they can do some setting adjustments to a router and make it unlimited in a router. Carriers don't like that. Uh, so when they do s figure it out, they you see these mass shutdowns. Um, quite a while ago, I don't know, two plus years ago, um, we really kept investing very heavily to uh, to get data plans that are not like that. They're, they're business plans. Um, our Verizon, our serious plan specifically, authorized for resale, authorized for what we're doing, cost a bit more, a lot more stable. And, you know, we, we, we see lulls in our sales. And then all of a sudden, like three times a year, we're like, what is going on with data? And it's just like 150 lines sign up in a month. And we just start Googling. We're like, who got shut down? <laughs> so, so, yep. Um, yep. yeah. So, so to answer your question, can people go out and get these plans? Yes. Typically you can get a similar plan, but for the most part, they are reserved for businesses. So you'd need an EIN number. Um, and you'd need to s sign up um, for a business account, and then you'd kind of need to navigate and figure out uh, what plan would be best for you uh, in that in that realm. For that something carrier. tells me in those situations, are you, are you able to do month to month, sort of the way we are? Or, or yeah, are you probably yeah. They, into... they, no, they don't. As long as you don't buy hardware from them at the time of purchase, there's not typically a contract. Oh, um, it's more just. It's it's going to be post paid, so there's prorated charges and stuff like that. But um, you know, you you can do it. I think probably one of the hardest parts is if you go into a store, they have no idea what they're talking about because those aren't really the business reps. They look at a pep link or a router and they're like, "That's not authorized." You're like, "Here's the Verizon Open Development website that says it is." They're like, "Oh, I've never oh. seen that." Before. It's just a fight. Um, so you know, that's why at least for for this week and a little bit into next week, we are um, we're offering free a, a month of free data on any plan with any router purchase. That just kind of gets people connected, understanding how it can work, and gives them some time to shop if they don't want to keep that plan, and if they do want to keep it, they can. Um, one of the nice things, at least T-Mobile and Verizon, as of this year, is they let us reuse SIM cards now. So if a wow. customer pauses their plan. Yeah, they used to, we used to have to ship new SIMs all the time, but now those two carriers have just said, we're sick of shipping SIMs too. <laughs> so um, we can turn on old SIMs um, typically as long as they were our original SIMs, we can turn them back on. So you can pause your plan and then, you know, reconnect it later. Without having to have somebody mail you a new SIM wherever you happen to be at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Which when you for, when you buy from us, you get a free SIM, so it's there. But you can message into customer service after that, like, "Hey, I already have a SIM. Can you just activate this one, and we can take care of it?" That's that's great. We we like flexibility for sure. Yeah, yeah but this this uh, remote SIM is going to be cool because that's going to so, be like uh, like turn was... on a SIM card in a, in in an hour instead of you know sorry support probably just backflip in four hours. Uh, not four days because you're waiting for mail or whatever. Yeah, we can do it same day, which should be great um, yeah. for the most part. Yeah, I, I did want to talk about because I know we're kind of getting close to the end of our time. So we, we have new plans, two new plans we wanted to highlight. Um, we kind of talked about it indirectly here, but before, if, if you've been a customer, we've had a, a, a high gigabyte T-Mobile plan, and then we've had a Verizon 300 gigabyte plans for a while. We're very excited because we now have a 300 gigabyte AT&T plan. So we officially can offer all carriers now, which we're, we're really thrilled about. So depending on where you are or what tower you're closest to, if some people are seasonal or something like that, we do now officially have all carriers. Um, there are two flavors of Verizon and T-Mobile. So they're both, they're all, or I'm sorry, Verizon and AT&T have two different flavors. Um, they're all 300 gigs, but they, the way those carriers are running their plans, one is going to be a 25 megabyte throttle. So you can only get 25 uh, megabytes per second on like a speed test. It's going to max out at 25. And then if you needed more than that, you can go up to a 50 gigabyte. That's the plus plan. So there's the B300 or R300 for the 25 megs, um, throttle, and then there's the plus plans, the B300 plus and the R300 plus if you want a 50 megabyte um, throttle. 
I tested the R300 at 25, and yes, it does stop you at 25, but I was able to get four computers streaming 4K all at the same time. So, it's, yeah, and um, if you're augmenting it with Starlink or any other connection, it's like 25 megabits plus your other connection. More than enough. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I so, I have access to anything I want, and I I will default to the 25 megabit because it's just don't yeah. care. Like I don't need the. This doesn't matter. Never, you don't I never need, hit yeah. that number. Yeah. Um, if it was so, my only connection, it might be worth a few extra bucks. You now, forgot the coolest plan. Oh, I, I haven't forgotten. I haven't gotten it yet. So the coolest <laughs> plan that we're very excited about is a R1000 plan, which is for 5G modems. So uh, what this is, it's a Verizon, basically one terabyte plan. The big disclaimer, though, is you've got to have a 5G modem. Um, it only works on 5G modems. Now, it will it requires 5G to activate but it will work on 4G if you go somewhere that doesn't have 5G, but you still have to have a 5G modem. So um, just that is the big disclaimer for that plan, but it is great. So if you want, if you really like Verizon, Verizon is your network um, and you need more than 300 gigs, we now have a, a basically a terabyte plan on Verizon. And again, that's a soft, that's a soft cap. There's no real cap on that plan. It's just, we set it at, we set it at one terabyte to, you know, not use the, the evil unlimited word, but it is not a yeah. capped plan. So, mm -hmm. if you, if you yeah. So, I mean, if you, terabyte, it's not going to stop. If you had like a BR, I know a lot of people went out and bought a BR1 Pro uh, 5G unit. So, if you have that paired with Starlink and you did like the R1000, that'd be two terabytes of data at your disposal every month. Um, kind of between those two plans, you could also do, um, yeah, lots of mixing and mingling. So a couple other things I want to talk about on the data side. So we've worked hard on um, the store side, because this is the side I work on every day, uh, bringing in some new discounts. So there's a couple ways to save with these plans. Um, the first is if you are a member of Mobile Must Have, there's different tiers of membership, but if you're an Explorer member, which is by far most popular, uh, you will get $10 off per plan. So um, if a plan was like $150 and you're a member, you're only going to pay $140 um, every month for that data. So that can be um, that can be big savings for you. And that's it. Every plan, every plan will get $10 off um, if you have more than one. Now, if you have more than one plan, we're going to do a multi-plan discount too, which means every plan would get $10 off. So if, even if you're not a member, it doesn't matter if you're a member or not. If you have more than one plan, each plan gets ten dollars off so if you have two plans you're saving 20 bucks three plans you're saving thirty dollars now if you are a member and you have more than one doubles. plan it doubles so each plan will get ten dollars off for being a member and then each plan will get ten dollars off for having more than one so you can quickly start stacking forty fifty dollars worth of savings depending on how many plans you have yeah that's uh that's yep. that's that's really nice i mean yeah i think i think it's good to to reward that kind of loyalty to our to our customers for sure. And if you do it this week, you can get a free thirty days of data on one or two plans, depending on how you. Uh, well, I guess probably one plan because it's one plan per hardware purchase. So unless you bought two hardwares, but um, yeah, so you can get thirty days of data, and then you can stack discounts on top of that, if, depending on what kind of plans you've got or are looking to sign up. So in other words, just to clarify that, the first data plan that you buy with your bundle comes at no cost for the first 30 days of service. Okay. When it zeroes out on the cart. Yeah, so on, at checkout, it'll show you. Now you have to add it to the cart, and then once you get to the checkout screen, it'll show it zeroed out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun Eric, times was there something, we Eric, also, was there something else you we, wanted to say there? Sorry, I didn't mean I to I just think, you, you know, I mean, as long as I can, with confidence no it's not a tablet plan or some hot wired plan we offer price match guarantees so if you bring us a reputable website or competitor and say hey they have a plan that looks like your plan you know we obviously will match that and discounts will still apply i, I think that's the that's a good sort of last question to, to to wrap up with what's our process in terms of when we launch a new plan how long do you guys typically test it for before you we put it out in the wild so to speak it, you know it's i it used to be six months it's probably three to four months because we're getting much better at it 
one of the things that we actually have now is we have we have kind of we have some people that work at the carriers that can help us now so we'll activate a plan that is told to us to be something and 80 percent of the time in testing and looking at the back end codes it's not what they tell us it is um <laughs> i think this is what is responsible for a lot of those shutdowns um, we've also so learned what to, to look for test and manage them quicker yeah. like even before we like we've just not even testing certain plans because we know to look for certain things or what's in the back end of you know that's not going to work because we've done that we've tried that it's you know we've already gone through the ringer with it so that's helped too. If it's too, if it sounds too good to be true, and it's significantly farther apart than what the carrier is charging, probably is too good to be true. Probably it might work. Not great. It might work for a little while, but uh, you know, as we saw with um, with AT and T and certain blacklist issues, you know, they're not necessarily messing around anymore. So it's it's good to be on a legit plan that you know is designed to be on a router. And typically, if you see a carrier that's doing something like 300 gigs with this amount of fixed uh, bandwidth, that's telling you it's a router plan because they don't design those for tablets or phones. They wouldn't even make sense for that. So um, so that kind of lets you know, okay, this is most likely a, a router plan. That doesn't mean it's a authorized for resale. That's a whole other level of testing we have to do, which is checking you know where we get these things and making sure they're through legitimate channels but um what's been great is that verizon when they opened up that plan about a year ago for resale and i've gone all the way through the fraud departments to verify that um i had a little tiny phone plan that's under our our llc with four 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 lines on it and they found mobile must have shut down my phone lines i called them and i'm like what are you doing and they're like you're reselling i'm like under this authorized resale contract that is not the account you shut down they went sorry turned everything back on so we know you know we've we've gone through the ringer to to super fun by the way when your navigation and your rv stops working and your internet goes down on your phone <laughs> what is going on um like yeah. i've had this phone line with you for 18 years uh okay so yeah but um but yeah we do a lot of vetting and testing to 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 authorize that and with that verizon plan we started to see a lot of folks open up and kind of match it if you look they look really similar and it's because they're competing yeah so, yeah. Uh, yeah and i don't cool. think starlink hurt anybody either i think starlink made the uh the competitive landscape a little more interesting i know in 2019 2020 when we started man there was like a data drought it's just so hard yeah. to get anything good. Well, and I think some of that too was the idea that, you know, especially during the pandemic, you had all of these people that used to go to a fixed place and have terrestrial internet working from an office that were now working remotely from pretty much anywhere. And the networks just didn't have time to catch up to that in a lot of ways, it sounds like. I mean, you know, now we are, here yeah. we are three years later you know, almost coming up on four years later and, and, you know, the, the landscape's changed. I mean, one, you have Starlink that's giving you mm -hmm. sort of additional, yep. it's taking a lot of the sort of brunt off the top of it because high usage people are probably going to use some Starlink in those situations. And then you they the also, carriers have matured too. I think they also saw how much money I mean, like, Starlink was getting for usage like that, you know. Um, but we're seeing, the Starlink we're seeing the Starlink, we're seeing the Starlink kind of anger wave right now we're getting a lot of starlink customers that are like i don't like starlink and i'm like hold on i'm like starlink's great are you just trying to use it for zoom and they're like yeah i'm like it's not good for zoom like it's not going to work for work but then we see a lot of retirees who are just trying to watch netflix on it and they swear by it they're like this thing's awesome i'm like yeah it's what it's for it's like a high burstable download system that works really well but the two-way communication to a you know basketball floating in space is a little more complicated than people want it to be. I'm on a Zoom call right now with Starlink and a DSL modem. That's what I have bonded for this call. You don't need a lot to make no. Starlink work, but you just need that stable upload connection to balance them out. And then it's an absolutely great product because there is zero self-service where I am. It just doesn't, doesn't exist. So, As evidenced by you know. the fact that early on, when we first started running this company, you would go up to New Hampshire and we just wouldn't hear from you for a few days yeah. at a time. <laughs> I miss those days. 
<laughs> yeah. It's, it's it, a little it was tougher great. now. <laughs> it was great when Eric and I were both there. That was that was when the real fun was happening. No, oh. that was not fun because I was the only other person <laughs> running the company and there was nobody else here. So that that, that was not fun for anyone <laughs> on this end of the call anyway. <laughs> But I remember I would have to run to the grocery store and that's where we'd be like messaging all of our <laughs> I think at some point I texted Eric and was like, Hey, listen, one of you better cut back better come back into internet range or I'm not going to be the hero. <laughs> I think I the line that. was, I'm going to throw my laptop in the harbor. <laughs> so the yeah. pre the pre Starlink DSL only days. <laughs> yeah. Well, yep. you know, at that it looks like we're up at an hour. I want to thank everyone for joining and also remind everyone that um, you can go to talk.mobilemusthave.com and schedule a consultation with one of our experts. If you want to talk to somebody about any of our solutions, uh, they're, they're there. We schedule those um, at a mutually agreed time. There's plenty of slots there for folks. Uh, that makes sure that you're talking to an expert, not somebody you know, on a call center just waiting to read off the script. We want you to talk to somebody who knows this stuff. And um, and uh, as always, please subscribe because we, we like to put our kind of unofficial cool updates in the fireside chat. Uh, yeah. If, if where, you're going to uh, hear about something new, you're going to hear about it here first, for sure. Yes, and, uh, I just I just got a lot of uh, new product announcement updates from our friends at uh, Peplink. I'm not allowed to talk about yet, but I will be able to soon. So make sure you subscribe. And then, do you want to lastly just want to tease our topic for next week? I think we're we're not going to talk about internet. Maybe we'll just leave it at that as a cliffhanger that says we're not going to talk about internet next week. We're going to talk about something else. What's what's next week? Agua. Agua. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, that's my entire day tomorrow. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah, get to it. <laughs> I'm going to use my internet to upload videos about water. <laughs> yes. Next week, okay. next week we're going to talk. We're going to dive into some really cool water filtration stuff that is just game changer for 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 the RV space. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's easier to travel with, it's more durable. Andy and I have been battle testing it for two plus years. Generation stuff, generation one stuff was, eh. generation two really was ready to rock and roll. Now we're starting to look at Gen three, and it's just I have one. awesome. Um, I've been testing yeah. Gen 3 now for two weeks or two months. Yeah. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just, and we're all running on the exact same hoses, the same fittings, everything from two years ago. Uh, I haven't had a single failure. Andy has had one failure because he left a water softener out and it froze. <laughs> Sorry, we haven't figured out the physics of that yet. I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I didn't leave it out. I was on vacation. I wasn't home. <laughs> it was worse. Oh, yeah, it was like, yeah. That, remember that Texas ice storm? Yeah. Made for a good photograph. Storm. It's gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll share that. We'll share that next week. But just, yeah, that'll be uh, next week's topics of water. Very good. Well, thank you both for, uh, for joining me today. And, uh, we will see you both next week. All right. Thank see you. Guys. We're out. Thank you. Bye.